Checking accounts, checking accounts, checking accounts. We pretty much all have them and almost no one is using them correctly. What's going on YouTube? I'm Reggie Bryant and I want to tell you guys a quick story on what just happened. So I was on the internet the other day and I just so happened to notice that hundreds and hundreds of people a month are searching for this question. How much money should I have in my checking account? And that really got me thinking because I'm like, man, there's probably so many people who have no idea how much they should have in their checking accounts, but only a few hundred people a month are searching for this. And so I'm like, why, why don't people know this? And that really just made me wonder, why haven't you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm yet? In all seriousness. It made me really think very, it made me think really deep about it. There's two problems. One is that a lot of people just simply put too much in their checking account, which, you know, results in them just spending way too much when they could be using that money for something else. Or people have too little money in their checking account. And as a result, they feel really uncomfortable every single month and they feel like they're always on edge. And if an emergency comes up, they won't be able to pay for it. That's how they feel when they look at their bank account. It feels so uncomfortable to the point of it really feeling like they're living paycheck to paycheck, even though they're not. The biggest problem is that when people have too much money in their checking account, most of the time they don't even know it. And they they just look at it, they're like, oh, I have money to spend on this, I have money to spend on that. And then their money just drains and drains and drains when it could be growing or going towards something else. These two problems are very frustrating because having too much leads to draining your bank account and having too little comes to just feeling really, really, really uncomfortable. And honestly, the question just becomes, how much money is too much to have in my checking account? And what is a good rule of thumb for how much money I should have in my checking account? Now, I honestly have a number in my head for what I think should be the amount that everyone has in their checking account per month, but obviously it varies from person to person. Everybody makes different amounts of money. There's different age groups, there's different careers, there's different businesses. So I honestly did not know how to answer this question. So I took the initiative of doing some pretty extreme research on a private investigator tool, also known as Google. And I was looking and I looked up the exact answer to this question. And I found these two things. According to the Nerd Wallet article, how much cash to keep in your checking versus savings account, you should ideally keep one to two months worth of expenses in your checking, while you should keep three to six months worth of expenses in your savings. Second thing I found is that according to the Betterment article, you should keep three to five weeks worth of expenses in your checking account. Something that the Betterment article really brings home is the fact that the number, the specific number is actually gonna come down to the person who owns the account. When you look at your bank account, do you feel comfortable? When you look at your checking account, do you feel comfortable with that number? Because if not, this whole video is just a waste. You have to actually go by these rules, but then feel like you have to look at the number and feel comfortable with it yourself. And that's what I agree with. I agree with Betterment on that, that it's not only just a few weeks or months worth of expenses, it's really what are you comfortable with? And, and really what it boils down to is two things your checking and your savings. You see, there's an ongoing battle between your checking and your savings account, and most people don't even realize this, but it really boils down to checking versus your savings account, and here's why. Generally, people who have a lot of money in their savings account, or just a decent amount of money in their savings accounts, like say over $1,000, it's a lot easier for them to lower the amount of money that's in their checking account because they can prioritize it to other things because they have a decent cushion within their savings account. However, when you look at people who don't have any savings or just little, basically little to no money in their savings accounts, then you're looking at something else. You're looking at someone who's padding up their checking account for all it's worth so that if anything happens, they basically have their checking and their savings accounts in one. The problem with this is when you do that, there's way too much money to spend. Like I knew this one guy who had like $9,000 in his checking account, had no savings, had no nothing else, had no separation, no nothing. Everything was in his checking account. And what do you think he did? He overspent. So the point I'm bringing home is, when it comes to being comfortable with the amount of money that's in your checking account, first of all, you have to have a checking and a savings account. And I think that if you separate the two, it's a lot easier to decide how much should be in which one. Does that make sense? Like if you have your three to six months worth in your savings account, you're gonna have a lot less pressure put on you to have you know, several thousand in your checking account if you don't need to. 
So with that, after you have a checking and savings account, my advice to you is just to simply know your number every single month. And this is how you're going to really decide on what specific number that you individually want to have for your checking account. And it boils down to this. All you need to do is have your your monthly income after taxes subtracted from your monthly expenses. And I'm not just talking about needs, I'm talking about everything that you can expect to spend your money on. That's your rent, that's your utilities, that's your car bill, that's your internet, that's your cable, you know, everything that you can expect that comes at a regular cadence out of your paycheck. What is that number? When you get those two numbers, you subtract them from one another. Hopefully that number is a positive number that you get after you subtract the two. If it is, then that is a good baseline for what your number should be. That's what you're going to have left over after your uh, after your income is subtracted from your expenses on a monthly basis. So if, if you're not happy with that number, you can obviously build it up and then you can say, all right, I don't want my checking account to go below this number this month. And that's really how you do it. If that number you got once you subtracted the two were negative, then check out my other videos for managing your finances and saving more money and making more money because I go over all of that stuff in depth. I even have more videos to come on that because I really am passionate about that topic. I personally stick closer to Betterment's rule of just having three to five weeks worth of expenses, but for other folks, Nerd Wallet's advice is just as good. I mean, there's no right or wrong advice that either one of them gave. It really pertains to the individual person, what their preferences are and what they feel comfortable with. Me personally, I don't feel comfortable with having two months worth of expenses in my checking account. I would much rather use that for something else. I want you guys to comment down below, which advice did you agree with more? The advice from Betterment or the advice from Nerd Wallet? Leave a comment down below, I'll respond. Since you made it this far, here's a bonus tip for you. Have separate checking accounts and have separate savings accounts. So, for example, you could use one checking account for just bills and you can use another one for leisure. Split these things up and you can really have just a, a couple or three checking accounts or so. And then the, the same thing with savings. You could have an emergency fund with, with your three to six months worth of expenses. You can have an emergency fund number two with, with an extra thousand dollars just to cushion, you know, the first emergency funds so that you really don't have to touch the first emergency fund. You can really get creative with how you separate them, but I found that if you separate your bank accounts and how much money you save, out of sight, out of mind, and you don't end up going in there, reaching in there and just grabbing wads of money that you otherwise would have if they were all in the same account. But that's pretty much the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Reggie Bryant. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can really change your life. So control you, control your finances, control your life. Thank you so much for watching.